What's going on everybody? So uh, as you can see today we have a little bit different uh, video for you. Um, I'm not working on a four-wheeler, dirt bike, or anything like that. I'm sitting inside of my truck. So uh, topic of today's video is torque management. We're going to go over what is it, what you can do about it, and is it a good idea to uh, completely disable it. Torque management is uh, mostly found in GM vehicles for what I've seen with uh, drive-by-wire throttle bodies. So it's a uh, pretty much a safety feature that's meant to save your drivetrain, transmission, uh, transfer cases, rear ends, stuff like that. The computer pulls time in for uh, when you're at full throttle and in between shifts to make sure it shifts smoothly and like I said, save your drivetrain. What most people don't know is it from what I've read, it affects your takeoff too. So if you floor it from a dead stop and your car or truck's taking off really slow, you have a GM car, most likely it's torque management. And uh, so I have right here today is my uh, Super Chips Flashback F5. That's what we're going to be using to disable torque management. And most uh, some tuners, you can remove a percentage of it and kind of keep it like safe. This one, however, disables it completely, 100% gone. I'm going to be doing three tests. First one is a uh, full throttle takeoff. The next one is going to be a one to two shift, normal driving. And I want to throw in a about a 40 mile per hour pull, see if it downshifts into the next gear and actually goes. Uh, sometimes this truck is just really inconsistent and now, anything below 40, it usually kicks in, it drops down a gear and goes. But uh, 40, anything above, it kind of just kicks in and it goes so slow. So, that's what we got for today. But before I start the test, I do want to go over my truck. So, it's a 07 Silverado Classic with a 4.8. So, it's 03 to 06 body style, but it has... Uh, some features of the newer body style that was made for 07. So it's got electric fans from the factory, uh, steering rack, stuff like that. So the electric fans is actually going to be an advantage of this already. So uh, older trucks, you have to do a fan clutch delete and then put in the electric fans. Luckily, this came from the factory with them. So my truck is a two-wheel drive extended cab with eight-foot bed. So it's a WT model, it doesn't have any uh, window motors, anything like that, so it cuts down the weight a little bit. But without me in it, it's around 4,800 pounds. Uh, it's not bad, but, you know, it's still extended cab with 8 foot bed, it's going to be more weight. And the mods I have for the truck are a Spectra intake, a quarter inch throttle body spacer, Excel super coils, from a uh, LS2, LS3, and LS7, so that's not meant for the truck engines at all. It's Excel Super Conductor, I believe they're called. They're 9,000 uh, ceramic wires. Uh, let's see. NGK laser cut plugs. A 25% underdrive harmonic balancer from Summit Racing, and that came with a alternator pulley too. So I kind of drop down the size of that gets everything spinning you know at different rates but it also makes sure that it charges the altimeter and then I have a full AC system delete everything the bracket condenser everything is gone and this trucks about 22 feet long so I cut about four feet of exhaust piping off and I had it come out before the rear tire with a Flowmaster Super 10 so that's Right now, everything I got besides the tuner, I put it back to the stock tune because somebody was actually supposed to buy it, but he flaked out on me, so I kind of just left it because, for one, this test, it just makes it easier, but for normal, everyday driving, I've seen that the stock tune, it's just a lot smoother. You know, shifting, taking off, um, everything like the 87 and the 93 tunes, it's kind of a little bit more of a, obviously aggressive tune. So the shifting is kind of like inconsistent sometimes, unless you're really like beating on it. 
So, uh, all right, enough talking, let's get to the testing. So this is completely stock. The stock tune, torque management is still left on. And uh, if you're wondering about the check engine light, this uh, engine is a Hydrolock Survivor. I was driving through a flooded out spot and uh, it's not that it was really higher than I thought, but the tires, I had to remove some of the uh, fender well because the tires, I got a bigger size and I have a wheel spacer, so I had to cut a little bit of that out. And I think doing that, the tires just were flinging that water up so high, it just got sucked in a little bit. But um, yeah, it says cylinder seven misfire, but it's not misfiring. Uh, there's no sputtering, uh, you know, uh, anything else, no slamming around, no uh, jerking. So whatever it is, it's very, very mild. The uh, oil pressure is still good. The engine isn't making any weird noises. So, if anything, it might just be a computer problem. Maybe that got wet or, you know, a very, like, slightly bent push rod, uh, broken valve spring, slightly bent valve, which I hope that isn't it. But if it is, whatever. I can get it done. Alrighty. So, this is going to be completely 100% to the floor on takeoff. So All right, so that was completely to the floor on takeoff and uh, managed to squeal the tires a little bit, but you know so it depends. but uh, I do have BF Goodrich KO2s on here. They're about a year old and on dry pavement, they're pretty grippy like today it's 90 degrees out so they're pretty grippy right now but that was the first test uh, you can still tell it the thing took off so slow it took forever for it to kick in so we're going to turn around up here and then we're going to do the uh, normal driving one to two pole we're going to head back to where i was we're going to get this thing tuned and then we'll see if it makes a difference and hopefully i'm not walking home I, uh, my truck has 166,000 miles and the transmission is in pretty good shape. So, I got a couple cars coming here, so I'm gonna wait till these guys go by and then take off. Come on. Everybody always, I swear, you go to record or film and it's just like. Everybody comes from everywhere. It's only 4 p.m., so it ain't rush hour. All right, here we go. All right, so I don't know if you can hear it, but it was pretty smooth shifting. You know, no clunks, no bangs, no hang-ups, anything like that. So... While we're at it, I'm going to slow down to 40 miles per hour and see if it actually kicks in. No, it didn't. didn't drop a gear. It's just stayed in the same gear. And then once it does that, it's, it's so slow. Like, uh, it's, it might be actual tuning problem itself. Maybe the 87 or 93, it should take care of that. But that's what we're here to find out. So pulling back into the rest stop here. All right, so we got the tuner in, and just some things over this. You can go to tune, scan, the scan tool. You can check uh, engine code, stuff like that, but you can also do live data. So if you do have, like, you know, this uh, mildly built car, you can check trim uh, air fuel ratios, see if your O2 sensors are working. Uh, there's a knock, misfire thing on here, and a whole bunch of other stuff that you can do. And then info. So when you get this, 
This is device info. The status is stock, so it's not actually locked onto this VIN right now. The tune I am going to do is, hang on here, I'll turn the ignition forward, hit OK. So the tune I'm going to do is stock with options. Even though it's a stock tune, it still has options on it, so when you do that tune, it is going to lock it to uh, whatever vehicle you have it on. So just be aware of that. If you go to sell it, make sure you uh, convert it back to completely stock. So we got the performance, which is 93 tow, 87 octane, the mileage, and stock with options. So stock with options has no tuning and only changes option settings. We all knew that. And you got rev limiter, speed limiter for this tuner is set to 140 miles per hour, gear ratio, tire size, I went up on my tire size, so I actually had to use that, shift points, uh, shift pressure, uh, that pretty much just changes how hard the transmission shifts, fan temp, and here it is, up shift torque, most tuners It'll actually say torque management. For this, upshift torque is just another word for torque management. So we're going to go to disabled. Uh, master, enable, disable for upshift torque management. Caution, disable and torque management can cause harsh shifts. Okay. So we are going to see. Like I said, hopefully I ain't walking home. Building to... Uh, it don't take too long to build a tune, but once it's actually uploading, this thing goes pretty quick. So if you're in the market for a tuner, this one is priced reasonably more than others, and it's super easy to use. As you saw, you just click on whatever you want, click, boom, done. Now we'll go to yes. Come on. Here we go. And you'll see after the tune is done, it'll say erasing DTCs. Uh, when you do this, it, for whatever reason, goes into reduced power mode. So it actually has to clear check engine code. So if you see that, don't freak out. And uh, one very important thing about this tuner is when you go to have it tuned, have nothing... Uh, accessories plugged in turn your radio off if you have anything plugged in cigarette lighters unplug it and uh, Otherwise it might mess those up and make them completely dead So when you do use this, you'll see the gauges and stuff move. Also, if you don't, if you do see that, don't freak out. So let's see here. Turn engine off. Well, turn ignition off. And hit OK. Stock with options tuning is now installed. Hit OK. You can now unplug the tuner. And let's see what we got. Alright, starts up normally. Obviously the check engine light was taken out. So the first thing I want to see is park to reverse and drive. If it's actually going to just clunk or if it's going to be really smooth. But here we go. All right, that's about uh, normal. And, uh, I don't know, I guess I can kind of feel a little bit of uh, more peppiness to it. Like I was barely hitting the gas and it kind of felt more alive, but that's what we're gonna check out right now. So again, this is going to be completely to the floor on takeoff. Here we go. This thing, this thing is loud. But as you can see, um, 
there's no clunks. I didn't slam in the gear or anything. So maybe torque management is a myth. Who knows? But we're going to go up to uh, turn around in the spot I was at before. Do the one to two shift, normal driving, and then we're going to see if, uh, take it up to 40 miles per hour and see if it kicks down a gear or not. So people are probably thinking, man, this guy is all over the place. I'm just going back and forth, up and down the road. Hopefully I don't get pulled over. This thing isn't exactly too quiet. And it's also not like screaming NASCAR loud either, so... yet. Alright, so here we go. Normal driving. I don't know if you can hear it, but it kind of hung up like it was staying in the same gear and then it just randomly like shifted. But from I was under the impression from what I've heard that whenever you disable torque management entirely your transmission is just gonna go haywire it's gonna be bucking jerking you know shifting weird but as so far it's not too bad but at the same time there is zero difference on takeoff like you mash it to the floor and this thing just takes off so slow it's, it's a giant moving rock at that point so now we're back to this little rest stop area here. And we're going to finish my conclusion of torque management. And so far, there is a zero difference. So, depending on what you actually want to use it for, maybe uh, there might be a difference doing like, you know, uh, 87 tune or 93. But those tunes by themselves remove a percentage of torque management on its own and you can definitely feel a difference so maybe for this tuner upshift torque only has to do with uh, the transmission shift in gears it might not have to do with the takeoff but you know I also might need a pedal commander you know these GM drive-by wires uh, throttle bodies the butterfly valve opens up so slow and uh, you know also I might need a fuel pump too because this thing's been hesitating a while. Maybe it's just my expectations are too high. You know, this is a 4.8. It's it's not going to be fast by any means. But for everything that I have on here, it still should be doing a lot more. Uh, my fuel pressure is 58 to 60 PSI. So that's normal. I uh, cleaned my injectors. Everything's fine there. I did my intake gaskets. There's no vacuum leaks or anything. So, yeah, maybe it's just a 4.8. And it's really slow, and I just need to accept it. All right, so while I'm out here, I'm just going to show you guys the truck. But this is it. It's the, like I said, it's got the vision rims, the BF Goodrich KO2s. You can definitely tell it's a behemoth of a truck. And uh, this hood actually came on it stock. I believe it's a HD hood. I'm going to go pop the hood to show you guys underneath. Nothing fancy, but I like it better than stock especially with this hood man it looks way better all right so you can see the intake there I uh, wrapped it with that heat shield stuff it's supposed to make a uh, cooler air come in and you can see down there the smaller diameter harmonic balancer come over here you see the Excel coils that look really nice I've got on here you can see the wires, they're ceramic coated for like headers and stuff like that, which hopefully I plan on getting. And the AC is completely gone. And I got these cool little uh, uh, block off plates here off of Amazon. Those are like 20 bucks. Uh, that cleaned up that side so much. So my plans for this really is just uh, a mild cam, maybe some long tubes. Uh, some Holly fuel. Actually, I do want to get Holly fuel rails, but I do want to do the Trailblazer SS intake manifold swap. So hopefully we'll get to that at some point. Maybe a uh, high flow Y pipe. 
If I do get that, I probably won't get the long tubes. This thing would be like screaming loud. And then, yeah, like I said, just a mild cam. Um, that. The muffler on here is pretty much set. And, uh, yeah, just for those little things, I think I'd be happy at that point. But you know how that goes. You start adding power and you want more and more and more and you just fall down in the hole even more. So, who knows? Maybe at some point, supercharger, uh, turbo, something. Gotta get the money for it though. And, I don't know, this hood should clear a, uh, a high ram intake, which I would also want too, so. Who knows, let's actually bring you back over here. So I don't know if you can tell from here, but I do got two inch wheel spacers, so the tire sticks out a little bit. Looks way better. Don't mind the black rim. I gotta change the brakes over here. I also haven't washed the truck, so I guess that kind of adds to the whole chrome and black theme I got here, but here's where the exhaust runs out. It's got a black tip on there. Looks good. I'll let you guys hear it real quick. This phone probably ain't gonna do justice, but this thing sounds a lot better in person. And that's just a muffler with, like I said, about four to five feet of exhaust pipe removed. All right, so that concludes my whole video and the topic of torque management. So uh, the tests really speak for themselves. There is zero difference removing torque management. 100% completely gone. So, like I said, maybe I meet, uh, need a better tuner where I, it's more programmable for removing that, or just leave it in 87 or 93 tune. Uh, I actually had it on 93 tune, but gas prices right now definitely ain't leaving it on there. I also had it on the 87, but like I said, the guy uh, flaked out on me, so I kind of just left it in uh, stock tune it's just more uh, smoother for normal day driving which this is my daily driver so I don't really want to harp on it too hard and uh, I am gonna dig in to see what's going on with cylinder number seven soon but um, you know I can't really dig into it and then have to go somewhere and throw it all back together so that'll be in the works so uh, I hope you guys like this video It'll kind of give you more of a, an idea, you know, if you hear the uh, stereotypes, uh, don't remove your torque management all the way, you're going to ruin your transmission, you know, stuff like that, does it actually make a difference, and uh, like I said, this is a 4.8, that might be the problem alone, so um, yeah, thank you for guys uh, watching, we'll see you next time.